And now I'm honored to present Dr. Paola Perugini from the University of Pavia. She is a PhD in pharmaceutical technology and is a professor in the pharmaceutical and cosmetic technology at the Department of Drug Sciences at the University of Pavia since 2001. She is director of the second level master course in cosmetological sciences at the University of Pavia and is also founder and scientific director of Ethica Pass RL, academic spin-off of the University of Pavia. Her research fields concerning pharmaceutical and cosmetic technology led to several patents and more than 150 international publications and Congress publications. In cosmetic field, Dr. Paola received the Maison de Navarre Award for research regarding studies on photostability of sunscreen. Dr. Paola, thank you very much for being here today, presenting your presentation, your uh, collaboration, uh, entitled Upcycling, Transforming Byproducts from Waste and Agriculture into Active Ingredients for Cosmetic Use. Thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, invitation and for kind uh, presentation. Uh, today I'm here, I'm uh, uh, very glad to be here and uh, to speak about uh, one of my, my uh, main uh, topics of research because uh, um, I'm in the university and together with uh, the spin-off uh, um, ETHICAB, we work uh, in cosmetic development, uh, new cosmetic, but uh, uh, particularly concerning the efficacy and in vivo, especially in vivo efficacy test uh, to um, produce and to obtain a very stable, uh, safe and efficacy product. So today uh, I'll speak about uh, upcycle. Upcycle uh, is a, a good word. Uh, it's a, a very, very um, meaning being uh, in the world because uh, uh, upcycle can uh, uh, be defined as a process to permit to permit the conversion of uh, waste material to something useful or valuable um, I think uh, that uh, upcycle sometimes uh, can be confused with uh, other terms. And uh, uh, for this, I will ask uh, and would, uh, thank also my colleague that uh, uh, speak about uh, before me because uh, um, thank you. And um, uh, so I would like uh, to thank uh, the Dr. Hannah Palmira because uh, uh, she talked about uh, uh, natural product and sustainable product, but upcycle is different. So it's uh, uh, very important to um, to talk about uh, this uh, term because uh, the uh, upcycle can involve a different field, a different uh, um, several application, uh, cosmetic, but not uh, not only cosmetic, of course. Um, especially, uh, I would like uh, to uh, point uh, you. Uh, um, the, particularly in Italy, we have uh, an area that uh, uh, we have uh, a leather chain production that use all pieces of leather coming from animals to um, from um, uh, to uh, many different uh, products. Uh, also the hydro, uh, hydrolyzed collagen to produce uh, fertilizer for uh, plants. So upcycle is the use of uh, all type of waste um, coming from uh, different uh, uh, type of production. I think uh, that uh, uh, in cosmetic, uh, so maybe, okay. In cosmetic, the trend uh, zero waste and uh, burn at the end, uh, I think of uh, 2018, like a trend, because uh, uh, after the research uh, to reuse the packaging for uh, the um, huge devastation of our <laughs> nature uh, world, uh, it was necessary to uh, try um, a way to eliminate or reuse or readapt starting from the packaging, but it's not only a packaging field. In fact, uh, from a, 
trend, zero waste, now we have a movement, a new movement in the cosmetic field in which a new archetype for a beauty and personal care industry is developed. So it's very interesting because uh, consumer uh, require more um, responsibility from brand. Uh, they want that brand be more environmental, more friendly with the environment and um, take uh, seriously the direction uh, to the world and to the nature. So a lot of uh, new um, research and new uh, product can uh, uh, was be used in a cosmetic film starting from the waste. There are some ingredients and some product that already uh, used in cosmetic, uh, like some oil, uh, but uh, from uh, um, the product, the change was to produce new ingredients starting from the um, uh, the waste from food. So the way the food waste become a new ingredient for cosmetics. This is some example of a recently a product coming into the market like ingredients usable, suitable for cosmetic application. For example, an active high care produced by laboratory expansizers in France. Uh, that developed uh, some ingredient from uh, the major avocados. So we can reuse uh, some um, very important fruit. Uh, Juvoudin, uh, with the startup uh, Coffee Bueno, uh, recently launched uh, Copf as an alternative to argan oil in skincare products. So it's very interesting because we have a lot of uh, uh, waste from coffee. And the coffee is already you know, very interesting for uh, uh, its activity. And uh, the very new ingredients and uh, very strange ingredients, because uh, uh, it's the first time uh, uh, for this uh, kind of ingredient in cosmetic, is uh, at the end of 2011, um, Dr. Croft launched a range of natural air color based on waste black currant pulp. This is very strange. Uh, this innovation uh, uh, receive also a prize because uh, um, it's very, very interesting in new application. But uh, um, we have to underline, we have to highlight that it's not uh, so easy to use the waste of uh, uh, some product coming from food uh, because uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, process involved to obtain an ingredient can be used in cosmetic. First of all, different uh, several metal can be applied to the matrix, to the waste, to obtain a mixture of ingredients. The process are uh, the, the old or the new one uh, processes especially the supercritical carbon dioxide extraction that is very uh, interesting because uh, it doesn't involve the use of solvent but some microwave go into the green chemistry also for other application and so on a little uh, very uh, huge um, possibility for the process to obtain ingredients but uh, keep in mind that when you can you obtain an extract from a waste you don't obtain only one substance but you have uh, generally a mixture of substances and uh, so it's very important to proceed with um, a path to proceed with a a um, very, very important part to obtain the um, substance or the mixture that you need to apply in cosmetics. So usually, uh, what kind of ingredient uh, can obtain from waste? Uh, uh, usually suitable uh, ingredients can be divided in liquid and 
um, very often you hold, you obtain um, lipidic phase uh, like oils, natural oil, so can be effect, uh, chemically uh, oil like a triglyceride, but not only uh, ester with glycerol, but you can obtain ester, different ester, and we can uh, name all oils also if uh, there is some chemical differences between uh, their structure, but you can obtain a liquid phase, oil phase, and a powder. The very interesting point in the recent years is obtain functional powder, because this is the way the strategy can be winner, the winner strategies to obtain the best results when you start in from waste. And I want you to show and why show you the some example to understand what I mean with uh, winner strategies. First of all, um, like uh, uh, the colleague of mine uh, um, started uh, talk uh, before, there are uh, a lot of uh, step you have uh, to go across for, uh, for obtain uh, ingredient with high quality, high efficacy, and of course, uh, high safety for consumer. And a lot of step uh, are need also, and especially starting from a waste. You have, uh, first of all, uh, identify the ingredients and uh, proceed with its uh, characterization. And it's not um, always so um, simple, so easy. And then you have to evaluate the safety of the ingredients. And uh, if it's not uh, a new ingredient, because you came from a waste, you know exactly which substances are inside and all substances are well known from um, literature and from the psychological point of view, you can perform maybe only uh, preliminary safety uh, study in vitro and then go to the safety assessment in vivo with uh, at least with the patch test. Then you can uh, evaluate uh, the efficacy of the ingredients you obtain from a waste, and then you can formulate the product, the cosmetic product, and then test the final product. So it's a very uh, long path, but uh, it can give um, satisfaction if you uh, can take. But if you want to start at the beginning, I want to show you that it's uh, obviously also for ingredient coming from waste that you have you have to um, assure the the requirements the requirements required for all cosmetic ingredients the safety the quality and the efficacy first of all the safety so you have to know exactly which substances are in the waste and you you uh, which substances you extracted you use, you have in your mixture, in your product. So you have to identify. The problem from the waste can be related to the natural sources. So you have to, of course, like for all natural ingredients, test the absence of pesticide. And of course, the presence at the level of heavy metal, because maybe can remain in the product obtained from extraction from the waste, uh, maybe from the process to use uh, for the extraction. And uh, also for these kind of ingredients, you have to produce the safety data sheet in which you can put also the toxicological information, the ecotoxicological information also, and then the certificate of quality. The certificate of quality define the characteristics for each batch of product obtained. So it's not the same, it cannot be the same for all batches of ingredients because sometimes we can have um, 
little difference uh, presence of uh, some substances in C inside, uh, some uh, color, maybe also some differences in pH, maybe in um, particle size, if uh, there is a powder. Uh, so the certificate is specific for each, part, for each batch of production. This is uh, uh, for all ingredients. It, it's uh, very, very huge important for ingredient coming from waste because uh, you can start it for very heterogeneous materials. So you have uh, to standardize uh, the procedure to obtain always the same uh, ingredients. About uh, the uh, identity control of raw materials, um, we have to divide the technique that you can use to um, define which uh, substances are in the complex, in the matrix. So you can use a chromatographic um, and a technique like CC or SPLC, or as you want, uh, you have in laboratory to understand the type to divide the single molecules. But it's very important for each batch of uh, product to identify uh, the, the mixture, the all mixture. And uh, the sampler method to, uh, to be used to uh, the identification for the identification of raw materials and uh, now approved also in uh, the pharmacopoeia, and, uh, the official test in pharmaceutical um, regulation, uh, can be the near infrared spectroscopy. Uh, the near infrared spectroscopy can uh, can give information very precise information uh, about the um, ingredients and especially um, for the reproducibility of uh, the batch production because uh, uh, the company give and define the threshold for the identity. Uh, if uh, the new batch is inside the threshold, the batch is approved. Uh, in other case, the batch is banned. So, uh, near infrared spectroscopy can be a chance for company to uh, obtain very, very um, fastly the response about the control so the identity, but also for the uh, control of uh, water content content into the product, into the ingredients. Because uh, um, very often when you start from a waste, you have um, a high content of water, of humidity, and it is essential to dry the ingredients the, the starting materials before obtaining the ingredients. And uh, the uh, check the, of uh, the moisture of the water content is essential. And the infrared is very fast method to obtain these results. You can also obtain a um, concentration, a calibration curve, and you can also test the content like a uh, um, percentage of water inside the, the dried product. Then uh, I want you to show some example of uh, the path about uh, uh, the use of some uh, um, waste coming from nut, especially uh, oil uh, coming from the shell of the shells of different uh, type of nut and their application in cosmetic. Um, starting from the pecan nut, pecan nut is a very nice uh, nut uh, appreciated worldwide for uh, their um, different for the taste, but also for a characteristic, very important for alimentation, for food. And 
um, following the path uh, that we uh, saw before, we have uh, the first step, step of characterization of ingredients, especially for acid content. And uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, insaturated um, acid in, uh, in all nut. And uh, uh, this is uh, very important for uh, also for skin. About uh, the safety evaluation, uh, the was performed uh, in vivo, tolerability evaluation through the patch test, and uh, these ingredients uh, uh, was uh, um, defined as a no irritant and uh, no adverse effect was uh, um, evident after application. About uh, the efficacy uh, evaluation, uh, we try to uh, evaluate uh, two different uh, type uh, of uh, uh, efficacy. Uh, first of all, uh, the um, efficacy um, against uh, the radicalic activity. So we use the antioxidant activity test uh, through the DPPH test. Uh, it's very common, very um, simple method to evaluate the antiradicalic activity, especially for uh, lipophilic substance. And we use as a control the argan oil, very used in the cosmetic field. And uh, uh, we made a, a comparison to the standard, to the control. The pecan nut oil uh, coming from waste, so from the shell, is uh, um, has demonstrated more activity against uh, um, the PPH, so it's more anti-radical uh, power um, um, to compare to the argan oil. In the same uh, way, we study uh, pistachio. So uh, this is a way we uh, obtain oil from um, uh, waste, from uh, the uh, production of the uh, pistachio cream for food or pistachio um, fruit to be consumed. Consume. And uh, also in this case, uh, we uh, obtain a characterization of the ingredients, um, definition of no irritant uh, through in vivo tolerability test, and uh, um, the activity was uh, um, the DP, uh, through the DPBH test uh, was uh, higher than the control to again, like uh, um, pecan nut. Um, obviously, uh, no pesticide and no um, heavy metal are present in all uh, product we tested for in vivo. The third nut we evaluated was the hazelnut, so the oil coming from waste on the production of hazelnut and the use of hazelnut, especially in Italy for Nutella, is a cream based on the hazelnut fruit. Uh, in, uh, in, each, in this way, uh, we made uh, the same path about the characterization in acid, the evaluation of no irritant uh, effect on human. At least 20, 25 uh, people was enrolled for each test and uh, the evaluation uh, through the DPPH. Uh, but after that, we wanted to uh, verify the opportunity to use these oil, these oils in cosmetic formulation. And we produce the oil for air care spray, for air care, especially spray. The spray uh, are common formulation for hair and uh, the presence of high content of oil inside the spray can um, claim uh, several uh, effects, like a uh, shining effect on hair, and uh, compatibility, so it's uh, more easy uh, to perform uh, several uh, form of the hair. And uh, we want to uh, evaluate also the antioxidant capability to protect hair after application. The antioxidant capability uh, that before we tested only in vitro with DPPH starting from the oil directly 
in cuvette and uh, in uh, spectrophotometer. Um, now uh, we wanted uh, um, to apply the test on hair. So we use the stress and uh, we analyze the stresses and we um, verify the activity, antioxidant activity normalized for a quantity of spray used in stress and for gram of stresses used. Then we uh, verify the shining effect in vivo with a new technology. The new technology is a filament surface tester. It's a technology we developed in the university and uh, uh, now we are patenting. We are under patent, uh, uh, European patent, um, attending the, the number of the patent. And uh, it's very important uh, technology because uh, it is possible with the on only one instrument have uh, um, directly the, um, the efficacy about the shine, the color of hair, and all in general, or filament, like all uh, eyelash, uh, tissue, or as you want. But uh, about uh, hair, uh, this technology can uh, give information about color, about uh, shine, about the compatibility, and um, curly and frizzy hair, but uh, indirectly also uh, about the uh, integrity of uh, the hair. This is very important because if you, I want to use an ingredient and a, a product that can protect hair against uh, um, uh, oh, uh, well, against the treatment, uh, hot uh, treatment uh, against uh, chemical treatment, uh, maybe mm, some uh, um, permanent or uh, uh, some glazing product, uh, or also protect against uh, UV uh, rays. Uh, we can give directly what uh, only one instrument, all these uh, activities. So the results uh, uh, apply the same concentration of the ingredients in uh, uh, several sprays for hair in uh, uh, vivo and analyze uh, the, the hair compared to a control with the same uh, um, ingredients uh, like excipient, but uh, we uh, use algan oil at the same concentration as uh, standard. So the, the, uh, the results uh, confirm that uh, the oil coming from different nuts can have different efficacy. In particular, pecan nut oil uh, give, uh, um, gave a very high uh, shining effect, more than 88% uh, uh, to respect uh, to spray uh, based on argan oil. The pistachio give to the spray an higher antioxidant activity, very interesting activity, and the hazelnut oil can, oil, uh, can uh, improve the compatibility of the, uh, the air. So we have uh, three ingredients with uh, three different uh, efficacy. By the way, I want to uh, show briefly uh, one other um, big um, field of application uh, for waste, especially in Italy, and uh, uh, is uh, uh, the use of uh, uh, the residues, the waste uh, coming from the wine production chain. Uh, it is well known that uh, all part of uh, the wine production chain can give uh, important uh, substance for different field of application. Uh, 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 all of the ingredients of all substance are very known for antioxidant microbial agent. The first ingredient studies studied in uh, this uh, field was resveratrol. Here you can see the structure. Uh, but uh, our work uh, is uh, uh, specific uh, to um, uh, try to uh, use the pomace 
uh, because uh, here in Italy, uh, we have also in, uh, in Portugal, but uh, we have uh, a lot of area in uh, which we produce a lot of wine and uh, we have a lot of waste. So uh, the um, valorization of this waste is uh, a very important uh, field for uh, to find a new value for economic uh, um, uh, company. So in literature, uh, very, uh, a lot of uh, reports uh, concerning the efficacy and the function of different parts uh, of uh, the, the grape extract or the, uh, the vitis vinifera plant. It's very important for different uh, parts can uh, have different function um, can be suitable for cosmetic application. In uh, our research, and then I can uh, go to the end of my presentation so I can stay in time. Um, we have a project co-financed co by the Regione Lombardia uh, with the aim to valorize, valorization of grape pomace. So we started to uh, use uh, the pomace after the, the first uh, fermentation of the wine, of the, sorry, of the grape. And uh, uh, after a drying process, uh, uh, we um, divide in two different uh, um, processes to obtain different substances. So we try to use the um, supercritical carbo uh, dioxide, carbon dioxide extraction to have an oil fraction. This way can be limited because um, it's a very low yield of production. And uh, um, winner strategies for, in our opinion, is uh, to use all grape pomace uh, through drying and grinding to obtain functional powder. We analyze the functional powder in terms of antioxidant activity. And uh, um, now we are obtaining, and in this time and now, uh, we obtain a, a lot of uh, good results concerning the in vitro activity of uh, this powder. About the safety, uh, of course, it depends uh, from uh, the starting material. But uh, uh, starting from biological um, production, we can obtain powder with a good uh, granulometry, so size and dimension, useful like that, with also a present or anthocyanin can uh, give um, very pleasant um, color of the preparation. And uh, the first result was uh, a small cosmetic line um, named Grape Skin Care, like coming from winemaking industry byproduct. Uh, we are uh, starting the give efficacy test that uh, very, very promising results in, uh, in which we can see a very activity against uh, the wrinkle, so uh, activity is hydrated, is a lightening efficacy, anti-age, and lenitive. Lenitive is very important because can reduce irritation after UV exposure or other chemical um, insult to the skin. Uh, so this is a, a preliminary uh, test. The grape skin care is a prototype of line. It's not yet in the market, but is very important to be a starting point uh, for further study and uh, for uh, the um, valorization of the, um, the area, the geographic area. Uh, so I hope uh, uh, I stay in time and uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, your attention and let you free to make a question if you need. Thank you very much, Dr. Paola. We will wait to see if we have some questions. Until the moment, we don't have it, so. OK. I would like to say that um, your presentation was very interesting, of course, because it uh, valorizes waste. And this is a urgent need for industry and for the planet. <laughs> And um, I would like to congratulate you in, the, in your work in this field. 
And also uh, a curiosity, uh, are you willing to test these products from the um, oils that you extracted that revealed promising results in other products or will you stay in the hair field? Uh, so uh, in, about the oils or about the grape? Both about the oils, the oils. About the oils. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I evaluate only one sources of uh, uh, waste. Okay. Uh, from nut, from uh, uh, from this kind of nut, came mm -hmm. from the same uh, company uh, that uh, um, produce uh, food and mm -hmm. produce uh, um, food, and then the residues from uh, food production uh, is coming in our laboratory for uh, the test for activity in uh, vivo in vitro. Uh, it's, it could be very important, very interesting to evaluate to compare different uh, uh, supplier because uh, uh, it is very important to uh, put some uh, um, some minimal requirement for uh, ingredients coming from waste this is uh, uh, the reason uh, that i underlined uh, underlined that uh, uh, the characterization and the identity of the ingredient the substance inside the ingredients can be uh, very um, uh, strictly uh, in investigated. Okay, thank you, Dr. Paul. And now we have a question from Bruna Moreira. Uh, could nano formulations be the best way to introduce these compounds? Uh, if uh, we uh, talk about oils, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the problem for natural oils uh, coming from waste is the same of uh, oils. So it's uh, greasy, it's uh, color, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes smell. Uh, so uh, we work uh, some years ago also from uh, residues from uh, olive water, um, olive uh, uh, production, and uh, it was uh, very complicated for the smell and the color. The big problem are the color and the, the smell. So we have uh, to use uh, some um, pigment, uh, blank pigment, uh, white pigment uh, to reduce the color. And uh, you can use uh, some natural oil, natural essential oil uh, to change uh, the, um, the smell and uh, to make it uh, uh, more uh, ple uh, pleasure. About powder, uh, it's a very, very uh, chance to use it for skincare, but also for makeup. So you can have uh, a makeup with a function, a specific function, anti-age function. And uh, so I think it's a, a good uh, um, novelty for cosmetics, not only for texturizing agent, but also to obtain a real efficacy in uh, the makeup. Thank you very much, Dr. Paola. Uh, we will now uh, move on to the oral communications um, session. And I would like to remember you, remember you sorry, that you can contribute once again with your questions in the YouTube live stream chat so they, um, the speakers can answer them at the end of the presentations. And I would ask the, the speakers to stay until the end of the session so they can answer these questions. And also would like to mention that the book of, extract, of uh, abstracts and the diplomas for the participants will be sent uh, by emails to the participants as soon as we have the ISBN number. 